Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to review the Palcones Peated, I would say extremely peated, Texas Single Malt Whiskey. So I'm a big fan of Balcones. I've visited the distillery, have quite the Balcones collection. Of all their bottlings, this one I would say is one of the most challenging. I opened this probably six months ago, poured myself a little bit, and peated whiskeys in general need more airtime, need more breathing than other types of whiskeys. So, as I said, six months ago, pulled the cork, tried it. I was a little like, eh, you know, I was like, oh man, I mean, it seemed to be coming up short, but want to give it some time to breathe. Knew eventually I'd do a whole s another series on Texas whiskey, so I put the cork back in. And I've been nursing it over a few weeks, trying a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, trying on ice, trying it neat, try it with water, and I've got it below the top of the label. And now I think I rightly understand the whiskey and it's ready to be reviewed. Uh, but before I get into it, let me tell you a little bit about it. This is batch Pete 19-01, bottled 10-26-19. It's made from peated Golden Promise malted barley from Scotland. Nacho filtered, has natural color, bottled at 65.2% alcohol by volume, and sells for about $79. So generally when we think about peated whiskeys, we typically think about Isla, the most well-known uh, area or region uh, for peated whiskeys. However, there are plenty of peated whiskeys uh, from the Highlands. There is also some peated whiskeys from the Lowlands, and of course, uh, Ireland as well, which are very, 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 very different. My favorite, is Isla. So when I think of peated whiskeys, I think of Isla. If you're thinking Ardbeg, Laphroaig, Lagavulin, Kalila, or something from uh, Brucolati, or even, uh, you know, the Moyne from Bonhaven, this is nothing like those. Even though it is Scottish peated barley, it has a Texas character to that. It's difficult to describe. I would say it's almost like an earthy, terroir, sagebrush, kind of rustic character to it. So in addition to having a lot of smoke and peat, it's definitely there. Not so much, I would say, iodine or those typical characteristics you expect from Lafoid. It's more like a very dark coal fire. I do get some chocolate, but it's not like a sweet candy bar. It's more like a baker's chocolate, like a bitter's chocolate. You get some vanilla, some caramel, a little bit of stone fruit, but most of what you're getting is extremely dense and concentrated smoke. It's after a fire has gone out and yet it's not ashy, it's just this real dense smoke peat character. It does have some nice spice coming up on the, on the back end, uh, perhaps a little bit of baking spices, but it is somewhat competing with the smoke and peat character. And probably one of the, obviously, most dominating trait on this is this dark chocolate note. On the palate. <clears throat> 65 plus percent alcohol by volume. This is not how I'm gonna drink this whiskey. It's a bit overwhelming. It has quite a bite. A lot of tingling on there. A little bit of a numbing situation on there. But if I don't review it neat, people get upset. Dark, 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 dark chocolate uh, up front. Very dense and concentrated smoke. Vanilla, caramel, a little bit of spice. It's hard to describe it other than saying it's dense and it's concentrated. Not a lot of development, not necessarily a lot of change, although on the back end I get more of the caramel, vanilla, a little bit of spice, but it's pretty much the same up front in the middle and to the finish. Primarily sweet all the way through, although not super sweet. It's not like a dessert whiskey. It just has that nice touch of sweetness going all the way through. It doesn't have, I would say, a lot of range. It doesn't have a lot of development. Um, and it doesn't have, I would say, a lot of complexity. Now, what do I mean by complexity? When we're talking about complexity, we're talking about the range and number of different flavors. And then we're talking about development, how it changes or transitions. When I talk about depth or breadth, talking about mouthfeel and a, a more subjective perception of how it comes across on the palate. This comes, for the most part, like straight down the middle of the palate. 
and then get a little bit on the on the back end you are sort of going to at least i'm going to sort of uh shake cringe a little bit of whoa from the intensity of it at that high abv so this is not how i'm going to drink this whiskey i have been enjoying this whiskey on ice uh or with a little bit of water while reading a book and chilling out and relaxing how even that is not the best way to enjoy this whiskey. The best way to enjoy this whiskey is like this. What this whiskey delivers is very, very good. I really, really like it. However, to me, I think it is incomplete. It doesn't have the full range of uh, profile. It needs more to it. It's almost like a, a band that has a guitarist and a bass player, but no drums. It needs something else to give it some more, perhaps more bass to it, or it needs something to give it maybe more, more higher notes, Maybe some keyboards, maybe a piano, maybe another guitar, like you got a rhythm guitar and a lead guitar. It needs something else going on in there. Uh, Kalila is an example of an Isla distillery that I think produces very nice whiskeys. However, because about 90% of what they produce goes into blends, the way I think their distillery bottlings come along for the single malts come, the way they come along, to me, they always seem like there's something missing that is gonna be, provi be provided when it goes into a blend, because that's what they're designed for. And so Kalila, while they're very good whiskeys, I find the independent bottles of Kalila better than the distillery releases. There's something akin to that with this Balcones Peated. What it has is very good, but I think it's incomplete. I think it needs something else added to it. An absolutely mind-blowing experience for this whiskey is actually to blend it with another Balcones bottling. And I've tried it with several others, but the one I like the most, this is the Brujeria. Uh, I don't think it's getting outside of Texas. I've got several bottles that I picked up in Texas. Uh, this is bottled at 62.9% alcohol by volume. Another monster. This is uh, finished in sherry cast. So you're looking at Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez. This is a great whiskey on its own. Don't get me wrong. This doesn't need necessarily need anything else added to it. Uh, this is almost like uh, a Glendronic, uh, you know, 18 year old uh, Allardyce on steroids. But when you take this whiskey and you take this whiskey and you go 50-50, something absolutely magical happens. Now, how would I score this whiskey as it is? Um, what it has is very, 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 very good but I think it's lacking something. I'm gonna go solid 87 points. I'm gonna go solid 87. If you wanna make something absolutely magical, if you can get a bottle of the Brujeria and go 50-50. So I'm gonna take this much of the peated. This much of the Brujeria. A little swirly, not too much. Just try to get the two to combine a little bit. I'm gonna pour this now back into the Glen Cairn. Whoa. I mean, I, I've been drinking like this already. I've got three bottles of the Brujeria. Probably every time I go back to Texas, I'll pick up another one. <sighs> now it's just unbelievably uh, amazing. What I'm getting now is chocolate covered raisins. The smoke is there, but it's got some fruit character going in there. I'm getting uh, dates, figs, fig newtons, loads and loads of chocolate, vanilla, a hint of saltiness. The smoke is actually enveloping and uh, surrounding all the characteristics of the sherry cask from the Brujeria on the palate. Even the mouthfeel has changed. Even though it's big and intense and in your face, now it's not quite, it's a little silkier. Not silky silky, not smooth, but it's, it comes across the palate a lot nicer. Almost velvety. It has, I don't know how this happens. How do you take two bottles that are this high in alcohol and then blend them and it comes across completely different? I don't know. Reminds me a little bit of uh, like the Joseph Magnus cigar releases, how they're real high ABV and yet they can be graceful across the palate. Something magical is going on here 
and it comes across really, really nice. Super long finish. So on the palate, just as on the nose, fig dates, raisins, chocolate covered raisins, vanilla. There's a little bit of spiciness coming up on the back end. I'm still tasting it now, real long finish. It's actually, I don't know how, I would like someone to explain to me the science. It's actually light and graceful, silky, the way it comes across the palate. This here, blending these two together, I would go 95 points. Balcones, if any, uh, Jared, anyone else there at Balcones, if you're watching this, Emma, my highest recommendation is take these two bottlings and put them together. This, if they bottled this, I would give this a solid 95 points plus. I might even go higher than that. I, I, I'll get 95 to 97, I would go that high. It's that absolutely fantastic. So, my recommendation to you is, if you can get a bottle of the Peated and you can get a bottle of the Brujeria, buy them. Do I recommend the Peated on its own? Yes, yes, but for me, it's not one I'm going to drink on its own. If I want a peated whiskey, a big peated whiskey, I'm probably going to go to Isla, right? Or a number of, of the Highland peated that I have in my collection. This is a whiskey that I'm going to use to add something to other whiskeys. And because they're coming from the same distillery, uh, it's still a single malt, blend these two together. Because of the way they, that they're made uh, by the producer, they're going together. They're marrying together absolutely perfectly and absolutely fantastic whiskey. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this video. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I go live. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.